Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the ever-increasing world feast. Abel Damina is my name. You know what? I'm excited about the, the mandate of God on my life. Every day I see the mandate unfolding. People are coming to the glorious liberty of sonship. The scripture tells us you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba Father. Brother Paul will say to Timothy, God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. What it means is your mind is sound because you've been established in the doctrine of Christ. A sound mind is a mind that has understood the revelation of God's word. Once that mind understands, it's called the enlightenment of your eyes, the eyes of your understanding. Darkness cannot thrive in the presence of light. The entrance of his word bringeth light. So a sound mind is a mind that has sound doctrine, that is sound in doctrine. And that mind is a mind that thrives on the love that God has for you. So he has given you the spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. The power of God is the word of God. Where the word of the king is, there is power. So a sound mind, God has given to us the spirit of love, which is power, which will result in a sound mind. And that's what this word is going to do to you today. Do me a favor. Invite a friend, a loved one, a family, somebody to hook up to this broadcast. It will change your life forever. Now let me quickly mention, I am coming to the United Kingdom. And it's going to be a, a tour of the United Kingdom. I'm visiting about eight to nine campuses of Power City in the United Kingdom. It will be a tour that will run for two to three weeks. I'll be going from campus to campus. Some campuses I'll spend two days, three days, you know, one day as the case may be. But I'll be all over the UK in the month of this October. The dates are on the screen, the various locations and the dates of those locations are also on the screen. Now, listen to me. Do me a favor and yourself a favor. Organize your schedule. Take some days off. Organize to either be with me in all the meetings and travel around or be in one or two. But make up your mind to be a part of the UK tour. Invite pastors. Invite believers. Especially people that are tired of church, that are frustrated with religion, that don't want to go to church anymore. This is the conference for such people who are frustrated and are tired. They are tired of religion. They are tired of all the traditions. They want a true knowledge of Christ Jesus. They, they want to come into the revelation of Jesus Christ, which unveils the identity of the believer. It will be one tour that will change the lives of men and women in the United Kingdom. It, it, will, it will be very powerful. I'm looking forward to having every one of you in the UK be a full part of this great tour in the United Kingdom. I'm excited and I'm looking forward. And each of the venues, there's a phone number there for you to call for further details. So look at it again as the venues are appearing on the screen with the locations and the phone number, the dates and the time for the event. Please look at it again. And if you have people in the UK, send them information, mobilize, invite people. Organize people to be part of these great conferences that will hit the United Kingdom. I'm very excited about the privilege to make a difference in our world through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Fasten your seatbelts right now. Let me take you on a gospel adventure into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. What makes the subject I started dealing with on Wednesday important is 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Put it up for me. It says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. He was in the midst of a discourse with the church at Corinth. And then he paused the discourse and brought in this verse. So it means Satan can actually get an advantage of people under grace. So... To avoid Satan getting advantage of us, Paul now said, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Meaning that when we are ignorant of his devices, he will get advantage of us. Now, uh, in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus. He says, neither give place to the devil. And then in 2 Corinthians, he now says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, 
for we are not ignorant of his devices that means when we are ignorant of his devices we give place to the devil ignorant of his devices gives him a place to do what he wants to do in our lives so to avoid satan getting an advantage of us so we can maximize redemptions realities in our lives we cannot afford to be ignorant oh paul writes into the church at corinth he said to them concerning spirituals i will not have you ignorant concerning spirituals i will not have you ignorant so all through the epistles paul took time to deal with knowledge and to deal with ignorance because the only thing that will give the devil the upper hand in your life it's not that the devil is powerful. It's not that Jesus didn't die. It's not that Jesus didn't give you victory. It is simply because you are ignorant of his devices. So to avoid the ignorance, we started a subject on Wednesday, exposing Satan and his demons. Now we established that there are three personalities on the earth. There are three personalities on the earth. The first personality is God is a spirit john chapter 4 verse 24 god is a spirit the second personality on earth is man is a spirit thessalonians that god sanctify you holy spirit soul and body proverbs there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty giveth it understanding so god is a spirit man is a spirit the third personality is angels. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7. Who make it his angels ministering spirits. Who make it his angels ministering spirits. These are the only three personalities on earth. God, man, angels. God, man, angels. Outside these three personalities, there's none else. God, man, angels. Then we also establish that angels are not omnipotent. Angels are not omnipotent. Number two, angels are not omnipresent. Number three, angels are not omniscience. And we said Satan is not a personality on his own. Satan is one of the angels. Satan is one of the angels. Because in Genesis, God didn't create Satan. So Satan is not a creation of God. We saw in Genesis 1 and 2, all the things that God created were very good. So God never created Satan because Satan is not good. Every good and every perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning. So Satan is not good, therefore Satan is not created by God. Secondly, Satan is an enemy of God so therefore look at matthew 25 verse 41 then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels prepared for the devil and his angels so demons are also angels demon spirits are also angels so we have satan we have demons under the hierarchy of the satanic operation and then we did a little work on principalities and powers and we said the word principalities and powers is a compound word that deals with both demons and the angelic hosts of god but the good and the bad angels are called principalities and powers depending on the context in which it is used can i hear a good amen good job there all right now we also established that angels need assistance angels are, are not omnipotent they need assistance and we establish that they need assistance from daniel chapter 10 verse 10. now please listen carefully anything they have told you about satan and demons before that we cannot establish in what i am teaching here put it in the dustbin because people have a way of forming their ideology based on their experiences and based on fairy tales they have had the scripture forms the basis for our doctrine if it is not bad by scripture it has no doctrinal stand 
all right very important because your mindset can give satan an upper hand over you especially if you are given a wrong idea of satan and you embraced it and satan sees that that idea is an a root into your life he will maximize it that's why ignorance is not allowed that's why i'm taking time to get into this teaching because i realize that many believers think because they are in grace they can just live anyhow behave anyhow take things for granted and they are losing a lot of victories that they ought to enjoy as believers and the reason is because many believers take grace for granted and they have decided to embrace illiteracy especially where it concerns satan that you're under grace doesn't mean there's no satan there is satan and there are demons and they are active 24 hours a day therefore you must know who they are you must know where they function how they function and you must not give them room to function in your environment lest you make the finished work of christ a caricature please i'll encourage you if you love yourself too much don't miss any of these teachings because this is where the rubber meets the road many people say well i know why things are not working satan is after me well now we want to expose him so that you know whether it was satan after you or it was just you after yourself because we attribute too much authority too much power we attribute too much might to satan that he doesn't even have access to he doesn't have access to that's why the bible says on that day when we shall look at satan we shall narrowly look at him and we shall say ah ah is it this small thing that troubled the whole nations no it was not the small thing that troubled the nations it was the big ignorance of the nations that allowed the small thing to trouble the nations we are not ignorant of his devices i prophesy to the first hundred of you who will shout amen he will never take an advantage of you so daniel chapter 10 verse 10 behold and hand touched me which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands and he said unto me oh daniel a man greatly beloved understand the words that i speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee am i now sent and when he had spoken this word unto me i stood trembling then said he unto me fear not daniel for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to trust in thyself before thy god thy words were heard and i am come for thy words angels respond to words mind what you say i am come for your words i am not come for your crying i am not come for your feelings i am come for your words angels whether demonic satanic or angels of god they respond to words so mind the kind of words you are speaking because you could be communicating to demons and you could be communicating to angels of god i am come for your words it's your words that brought me here okay now verse 13 but the prince or the ruler of the kingdom of persia withstood me one and twenty days but lo michael one of the chief princes one of the chief rulers came to help me so angels need assistance angels require help they are not omnipotent they are not all powerful an angel can be trapped in a situation where he needs help to help you he says michael came to help me because he was withstood by the prince the ruler of a city called persia the principality over persia stopped the angel from coming to his city and the angel was kept there for 21 days until michael came and rendered assistance to that angel meaning that in the hierarchy demons have hierarchy and angels have hierarchy in the hierarchy of angels michael was of more superior level than the prince of persia or the demonic power behind the ruler of persia so when michael showed up that demon saw a superior power the demon gave way there's hierarchy angels have hierarchy demons have hierarchy they are not just scattered they are not just haphazard they are not operating anyhow no they operate in an orderly manner they are organized 
and they function according to the rules of their operation now that's the kingdom that you are supposed to engage and defeat well organized kingdom well organized system and that's why you can't afford to be ignorant you can't afford to be ignorant i'm going to show you some things jesus said about them remember jude also gave us an insight into michael's operation when they were biting over the dead body of moses you know michael had to show up and michael said to the to the demon spirits the lord himself rebuke you and the spirits left the body of moses so michael seems to operate at a dimension you know and the bible describes michael as an archangel or the chief of angels just like you have the archbishop the chief of bishops that means other bishops submit to him that's why it's an archbishop jesus is the archbishop of the church the bible calls him the chief shepherd the archbishop of our souls if you understand he shout a powerful amen now look at matthew chapter 12 verse 24 but when the pharisees heard it they said this fellow does not cast out devils but by beelzebub the prince of the devils they said jesus was a prince a ruler of devils and jesus did not refute what they said because in 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 reality he's the ruler of devils that's why he could cast them out and they obeyed him but that's not the point look at the next verse and jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand now jesus begins to open up something here concerning the operation of the kingdom of darkness he says to them a demon does not cast out a demon so if i am of the demonic kingdom i will not cast out a demon rather i will support the demon to carry out his activity meaning there is no division in our kingdom meaning jesus is saying that the kingdom of darkness is so organized that nobody fights the other rather they are always found assisting one another to carry out their common objective well organized and then jesus began to say well any kingdom divided against itself cannot stand the cheapest way to defeat a kingdom is to bring division the cheapest way to defeat a family is to bring division. The cheapest way to defeat a church is to bring division. That's why the Bible says anybody that is fond of bringing division among brethren, mark him and avoid him because that person becomes a weak link. When somebody is always carrying gossip, he always wants to run down a brother or a sister. Every time you meet him, all he's trying to do is to paint somebody black. Even if what he's saying is true. Why is he the collection center of negative report? Something is fundamentally wrong with him. He is working with a demonic, as a demonic agency. He's born again, but he has made himself an agent for satanic oppression. I will get into that. I will show you from the Bible there are brethren who have opened up themselves and satan is using them against brethren they are born again they will go to heaven but they are a minus to the advancement of god's kingdom and you must mark them and avoid them if not they will be the same people that satan will use to deal with satan is not your friend so anybody that is working with satan you must avoid him he may smile with you today but he will be the same person that the same satan will use to deal with you are we together here it's very important very important a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand a house divided against itself cannot stand there are some of you as i'm speaking right now some people are flashing in your mind those are people you quickly avoid you keep them out of your life next verse and if satan cast out satan he is divided against himself how shall then his kingdom stand and if i by beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be your judges but if i cast out devils by the spirit of god then the kingdom of god is come unto you 
or else how can one enter into a strong man's house take note of that and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house so in order for a man to be able to plunder the house of a strong man he must have authority over the strong man you cannot plunder the goods of a strong man until you yourself have authority over that strong man. If you don't have authority over the strong man, you can't bind him, you can't plunder his goods. Jesus teaching here and very instructive. Praise the Lord. So what Jesus is simply saying here is not that a demon cannot give instructions to another demon but even when they give instructions to one another, it is still in favor of their collective assignment. They never have... See, the devil has made some level of success. The reason why Satan has made some level of success is because demons have never been found fighting one another. The unity of their kingdom is the reason behind the level of success they have made. No demon has ever been found at any point fighting another demon. As evil as all of them are, in their evilness, they are very united. That's why they've made some progress. That's what Jesus is teaching here. That's what Jesus is teaching here. So there's a strong man, and if you're going to cast out demons, you must have authority over the strong man. You bind. The word bind the strong man there means disallow. You disallow the strong man. That's the meaning of the word bind. Alright? So, we have seen that, that, that Satan has angels. Satan and his angels. Matthew 25, 41. We have also seen that Michael has angels. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. What are demons? They are lesser devils than the devil. They are lesser devils than the devil. So Satan has demons that he issues out instructions to. These demons were angelic beings that fell along with him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 3, you now see something very instructive there. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? The question is, which angels are we going to judge? The angels that fell, demons, devil, Satan. We are going to judge Satan and his angels. Because both Satan and his angels are angels. And we shall judge them. We shall judge them. Amen. Okay, so what do we have in Christ Jesus? Well, before we get into what we have in Christ Jesus, you must understand that angels appear in different ways. Different ways. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So we see the devil tempting Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 verse number 1. Look at verse 24. Matthew 4 24 and his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. Jesus healed all of them. Take note of the word lunatic. He healed the lunatic and he healed those that were tormented. Torment. Lunatic. They were tormented. Alright? Now, when you find so many diseases in a place, when you find so many diseases in a place, there's a demon spirit behind it. Like you go to the hospital and the doctor says, high blood pressure, sugar, diabetes, um, um, and he begins to list all kinds of diseases on one particular person. It is no more physical sickness. There's a demon behind it. When there's a multiplicity of diseases, in a place there's a demon spirit 
a spirit of infirmity behind it. No matter the treatment with medication, no matter the expertise of the doctor, that cannot be healed. Because demons don't understand injection. Antibiotics don't work on demons. These are spirits. They are only cast out or expelled. So when you find out that a particular sickness has become adamant and resistant to medication in spite of the expertise of the doctors, that is a time to enforce the authority of the believer. Hello? To enforce what? Do you realize that all these people were healed by Jesus without injection? He healed all of them. None of them had injection. None of them had medication. He exercised the authority of the Bible because he said, you must have authority to bind the strong man. Then you plunder his goods. So, the believer's authority is very important. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as we progress in the course of this teaching. Look at the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. After casting out the spirit, what was the next thing he did? And healed all that were sick. So, there was a demon spirit behind the sickness. For him to heal them, what did he do first? He cast out the spirit that was behind the sickness. Then after casting out the spirit, he healed them. He wouldn't have healed them if he didn't cast out the spirit. Because you must first of all, bind the strong man. Then you can plunder his goods. Especially when you find out that the sickness is stubborn. It has refused to bend to medication. You know, some malaria, there's a demon behind it. Because with all the malaria injection, with all the malaria medication, the malaria refused to go. All the symptoms just stay there. That's a time to say, you devil, get your hands off. Get out of this body right now, in the name of Jesus. And you, 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 see, the, you see the person healed. You see the condition corrected. Amen. Are we together here? Yeah. He healed all of them. Or you find out that somebody is receiving medication and the natural healing process is interrupted. It's interrupted. The natural healing process. Instead of there to be a progressive healing taking place in the person's life, the process of natural healing is not progressing. The sin is just looking at, at you as if do your worst. That's the time to exercise authority. In the name of Jesus. And you know that name is above every name. Oh glory to God. I say that name is above every name. It's above cancer. It's above ulcer. It's above high blood pressure. It's above sugar disease. I feel like preaching now. It's above HIV and AIDS. It's above infections. That name is above every name. And when that name is mentioned. Every knee bows. Of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things under the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. We have that name. We have. Somebody say I own the name of Jesus. Say it again. I own the name of Jesus. And you know name is not J-E-S-U-S. -S. Name in the Greek means authority. Your name is your authority. Jesus said I give you my name. It's an open check. Whatever you ask the father, using my authority, the father will give it to you. Zepa told them again there. I prophesy over somebody. Everything you have asked in the name of Jesus, receive now. Amen. Receive now. Receive answers. Receive solution. Receive direction. Receive answers. Receive solution. Receive direction in the name of Jesus. That name is above every name. That name is above every name. What do we have in Christ? We have Christ himself. <laughs> what do we have in Christ? We have Christ himself. We have Christ. Watch this. The Holy Ghost showed me this while I was meditating. Early hours of this morning. Watch this. 
when Jesus walked the face of the earth, he didn't use his name. He never said to the sick, be healed in Jesus' name. He said to the sick, be healed. To the blind, eyes open. To the deaf, hear. To the lame, rise and walk. Why didn't he use his name? He is the name. So whatever Jesus did was a revelation of what his name will do. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Whatever you saw Jesus doing when he was on the face of this earth, he was showing you what his name has the capacity to do. So now that he's not here in the physical, you are here on his behalf. If he raised the dead, you too, you raise the dead. Where? In his Whatever couldn't say no to Jesus can't say no to you. Hale Bodagayana. Blessing you this morning. See, you're not a hopeless person. Stop talking like somebody who doesn't have Jesus. No. No. You are the solution to the problems of this world. You are not part of the problem. Say it with me. I'm not a part of the problem. Say it five times. Four times. Three times. Two times. Louder one time. Say, I am a solution to the problem. Say it three times. Two more times. One more time. So wherever you are, if there's a problem, what do you do? You solve the problem. Don't talk about the problem. Don't complain about the situation. Change the situation. Why? Because if Jesus was here, he would have changed the situation. But Jesus is not here physically, but he's here in proxy. You are representing him. And he didn't keep anything from you. All that the Father has and gave to him, he has given to you. All you need to do is manifest what he gave to you. And he will see to it that what you manifest is honored. He will make it happen. If you make it available, he will honor what you make available and see to it that whatever you made available is effected. Somebody shout, I hear you. Say with me, I have the name of Jesus. Amen. Say it very loud, I have the name of Jesus. I didn't hear somebody shout a powerful amen. amen. Woo! Luke chapter 9 verse 1. He called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils. And to what? Cure what? Cure diseases. When devils are taken care of, diseases are cured. You didn't hear that. When devils are taken care of, diseases are cured. Now, when he gave them that power, look at the result, the effect of that power he gave to them. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject. That word subject is a military term. Subject. That means they listen to us. They took instructions from us through your name. They are subject to us. They took instructions from us through your name. When we came in your authority, the demons listened to us. Even though they didn't like our face, but they couldn't deny our instructions. Through your name. They took instructions from us through your name. I prophesy over somebody. You are about to see victory like you've never seen all your life. You are about to see triumph like you've never seen all your life. Some of you hearing the sound of my voice. Things that have been long overdue in your life. But have been delayed by what you cannot explain. Right now that hold of the devil delaying the manifestation is taken away. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They are subject to us through your name. That is what we have in Christ. 
Mark 16, 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. In whose name do we cast out devils? In the name of who? Jesus. That's a sign of the believer. If you are a true believer, you cast out devils. Every true believer in Jesus is not afraid of demons. Believers are always itching to cast out devils. Why? It is a sign that follows believers. That's proof that you are a believer. It's one of the proof. There's another one they speak in tongues. That's a proof that you are a believer. When you speak in tongues, you cast out devils. When you, when you are a believer, you don't run from demons. You don't complain about demons. You expel. The word cast out in the Greek is the word expel. You expel demons. Just like one expellant. You are a demon expellant. Batomenge. Anywhere you enter, zepata, you, you expel them. Once you appear, they excuse themselves. They exit the building. Your appearance is their exit. Not that you and them are in the same environment and you're struggling for space. God forbid. Light and darkness don't struggle for space. The arrival of light is the exit of darkness. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hid. The devil is darkness. His demons are darkness. Am I talking to somebody? So when you walk into a place, demons should excuse themselves. I declare from this service, your arrival will expel demons somebody shout I am a believer therefore I cast out devils I will thought I will hear powerful amen Zipotanaga that is not out of place because demons take instructions they receive instructions they were subject to us in the name Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. The name of Jesus. In my name they will give instructions to demons. Demons are subject to us because of your name. Not because we fasted. Not because we prayed. Not because we are powerful. But the reason why demons will obey you is because of his name. So when you cast out demons, don't think about you. Think about him. And as long as him that is at work, demons cannot say no. There is a permanent yes. In the mouth of demons why 2000 years ago he disarmed principalities and powers it's a permanent state of victory what kind of state of victory permanent 2000 years ago he defeated demons 2000 years ago <laughs> he defeated devils 2000 years ago that's why I get worried when I hear people pray as if God and Satan are still fighting. We are waiting to see who will win. There's no more fight. Jesus defeated the devil. And made an open show of the devil. He triumphed over the devil. And he said all power is given to me in heaven on earth and under the earth. Behold, I give you now. You, you, you. Because I'm going to go but you will be here. What I have, I give to you. You go, cast out devils. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Freely you have received. Freely you give. Somebody shout, I'm in authority here. Zilo munga dagega. Somebody say, oh, they have done charm for you. You know what to do? 
Don't pay attention to it. The gods are dead. There are things we don't waste our time on. We don't waste our time on them. Why? We know better. Did you hear that? We know. We know better. Say, ah, your mother sent for you from the village. That one certain prophet said, tell, her, tell your mother, illiteracy is your problem. Illiteracy. Mama, illiteracy is your problem. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Cast out, expel. So a principality is a ruler over angels. Okay? Acts 5, 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, does no man join himself to them, but the people magnify them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women. What kind of people were added to the Lord? Believers. Believers. Okay, who is a believer? One who believes in Jesus. Okay, next verse. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least, the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. At the least. At the least. That is even the shadow of Peter. Even the shadow of Peter could not be resisted by demons. Without Peter making effort, even his shadow was taking care of demons and sicknesses. He didn't have to say in Jesus' name. Just his shadow overshadowing the sick. The problem with the church is you don't know how much authority you carry. That's why Paul prayed that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who we believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised from the dead. That you may know. That you may know. When knowledge comes, fear goes. Fear is, an, is a symptom of ignorance. Every fear is a symptom of ignorance. Fear thrives on the soil of ignorance. And faith thrives on the soil of knowledge. Faith cometh by hearing. You don't know better, that's why you're afraid. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, some of them. How many of them? Everyone. I mean, look at the authority of the believer. They were healed, everyone, every one of them. Next verse. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. Honey, can you see this? How can the rulers of a city be angry that people are healed? How can the government of a city be angry that demons are cast out of people and that the whole city is cleansed of sickness. The government got angry. The government of the city reacted. That shows you that demons always look for access through authority figures. I'm going to show you. They always use authority figures to carry out their reaction against the work of God. Always. Always. That the man is wearing a suit and he's speaking Queen's English doesn't mean he is not carrying a demon. That the girl is beautiful, has figure eight, huh? speaks correct American English. Huh? Smells nice. Looks really, really beautiful. Doesn't mean there's no demon hiding inside her. So 
some of the well-dressed people are carrying a lot of demons inside them. I'm not joking. I'm very serious. I'm going to show you. I mean, can't you imagine? Demons are cast out. Bodies are healed. People are liberated. Instead of the government to call these brethren and reward them handsomely for saving them their financial budget, saving them of all kinds of things, they are full of indignation. The authorities are full of indignation. That something good has been done to the people. I will tell you why in a few minutes. They were full of indignation. Next verse. And laid their hands on the apostles. And put them in the common prison. The reward was that they, the government arrested those apostles. And put them in prison. 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. And brought them forth. Angels went in there and brought them out. If there are demons, there are angels. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I say, thank you, Lord. The very appearance of Peter cast out devils. Just his appearance without talking. Just that demon saw Peter they exited they excused themselves that was just at the beginning of pentecost pentecost just took place in chapter 2 this is chapter 5 few days after pentecost acts chapter 8 verse 5 then philip went down to the city of samaria and preached christ unto them and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Next verse. And there was great joy where? In that city. There was great joy in that city. One man, Philip, went to a whole city and took over the city now this was not just a one-time thing they must have gone from house to house they must have gone around the whole city preaching and you know sharing the message so that at the end of the day they had a big crusade where philip came to preach i thought they've done all their groundwork just like in mark one the spirits cried out they cried out with a loud voice and philip cast them out philip expelled those demons now I'm taking time to show you that angels defy in authority. I'll show you one more scripture. Acts 16, 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. She is possessed, which brought her masters much gain by suit saying. So this damsel was possessed with a spirit. And the mission of that spiritual possession was to make profit. She was to be used to make a lot of money from people. And we have a lot of that going on in these days. It's all over the place. That's why when you find a church like this, where you are taught the word of God, you are established in doctrine, in the doctrine of Christ, you must be very grateful to God that you belong to a church like this. Where nobody is rasmatizing you and nobody is bamboozing you with soothsaying and divination. It's one of the signs that God loves us including myself because i also could have been in one church where they're using me for caricature but for the grace of god so saying all over the place there's such an unleash of native doctors into the society like never before and there's going to be an increase of it that's why you must be established in doctrine you must know the scriptures you must know jesus for yourself they are coming out in different forms. People like spectacular things. And there's a difference between the spectacular and the supernatural. They are not the same. They are not the same. Spectacular is different from supernatural. The two are not the same. But of course, the Bible tells us that, um, you know, people have itching ears and they will not endure sound doctrine. They won't endure it. You know, they like drama. They like entertainment. 
to sit down like this and take notes and hear the teaching of God's word, it takes only people that are sincere with themselves. The Bible says in the last days, there will be people who, who have itching ears. Jesus talked about a people that will seek for sign. He said, an evil and adulterous generation seek for sign. They seek for sign. And because some so-called men of God know that that's what people want, they perfect the act and they gather the crowd. It takes a man of God that has seen Jesus to stay with the truth. It takes a man of God. When you do those things, in the next one month, you will have thousands of people gathered. It doesn't take anything because those people are not looking for Jesus. They're just looking for, for drama. So all I need to do if I want to do that kind of thing is to train in acting. Just train in acting. Come to church, lift one leg up. There's somebody here. <laughs> But when you know Jesus, those things are not attractive. There's only one thing that attracts you, the world. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Are you blessed this morning? Look at it there in that same Acts where we are, Acts chapter 16. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, These men are the servants of the most high God which show us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. The evil spirit that was giving her the information, the evil spirit that was giving her the phone numbers, the car number, the house address, Paul commanded evil spirit to leave. When the spirit left, she could no more prophesy, prophesy. That thing that was telling her the things that she was talking is an evil spirit. When the evil spirit left her, she could no more talk. So her masters observed that their business center has been closed down. Watch now. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Look at what the magistrate did. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. The rulers reacted again against the oppression of God. Evil spirits always like to use rulers. That's why we pray for people in authority to be saved. Because if people in authority don't get saved, they become an easy prey for satanic advancement in a society. Now what's the meaning of the word divination? Divination means insight, knowledge, or to foretell. To foretell. That's why those kind of people, they carry information about you as if they slept with you last night. To foretell. They have insight. Uh, and part of divination is stargazing. Palm reading. Have you heard about palm readers? People that will carry your hand and follow the lines of your hand and tell you your story. Palm readers. Or they will tell you your star. And they use it to manipulate people's lives. This was not an ordinary spirit. This was not an ordinary demon. This was some very strong demon in that girl. Because with that her divination, she held the whole city and she brought much gain. There was another man called Simon the sorcerer who held the city captive and everybody from the greatest to the least looked up to him like some great man. Everybody looked up to him. He held the city spellbound from the government 
down to the smallest person. Everybody was under the spell of Simon. The whole nation under the spell of one man. One evil spirit. In fact, it was not an evil spirit actually. It was a principality. Controlled an entire nation. And everybody looked up to him as some great man of God. Everybody looked up to him. From the least to the greatest. But when Philip entered the city with the gospel and preached Christ, the Simon the sorcerer, his spell was broken. His spell was broken. And all of a sudden, he himself became a new convert. He got born again. He believed what was preached. So one spirit can control an entire community. And that's why Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers. Our wrestling is not the government. It is those powers that use the government. Our wrestling is not those wicked people. Behind every wicked oppression, there is a spirit using that person. Because see, demons cannot do things on the earth on their own. Because they don't have power to function here. They must have somebody to use. Somebody must be available. So that's why Paul is now saying, instead of fighting people, let's deal with the root. That man sitting on your promotion is not the man delaying your promotion. There is a demon using that man. That person holding back what is yours is not holding it back because he wants to be wicked. There is a spirit using him. And sometimes when these people are free from that demonic influence, you see that they are very nice. Very nice. It's just that they can't explain what held them back from being nice to you when they were under the influence. But I speak over you this morning and wherever you're watching my world television and on Facebook and on the internet, as your amen will come like thunder, as you will stand on your feet, anybody that is supposed to be favorable to you, that some demonic hold has held him hostage and has denied him the ability to be kind and nice to you, as I'm speaking right now, that influence is broken. That spell is broken. In the name of Jesus, wherever they are, there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Wherever these personalities and wherever these people are under the influence of satanic activity, I break the spell over their lives. In the name of Jesus, all those that have been commanded to favor you, commanded to show you goodness, all those that are supposed to be used in your favor and in your interest to advance your destiny as your amen will come like thunder they are released right now they are released right now they are released right now and anyone under the sound of my voice that is afflicted by infirmity the spirit of infirmity every hold of the devil every disease in your body that is manipulated by demonic activity every disease in your body that is manipulated by demonic activity as your amen is coming like thunder i command the devil get out i expel you right now you unclean spirit you spirit of infirmity you spirit of oppression you spirit of depression you spirit of obsession in the name of jesus lose your holes and get out 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 body be healed 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 infirmity get out get out pain torment zipatanaka affliction 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 i rebuke you i bind you get out in the name of jesus from your head to the soles of your foot i command the healing power of god to flow through your body be healed in your body be healed in your mind be healed be healed be healed receive 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 your healing receive restoration receive restoration those of you that have been 
intimidated by fear fear of the unknown fear of death fear all forms of fear god has not given to us the spirit of fear so you spirit of fear because you came from the devil in the name of jesus get out i rebuke fear i rebuke death i rebuke fear i rebuke death in the name of jesus the life of god flows through your body the life of god flows through your system the life of god flows through your organs you will not die you will live to fulfill the purpose of god if your amen is louder you will live your youth is renewed your health is restored your health is restored anyone watching this broadcast that has a stubborn condition that has defied every form of medication i speak to that condition be healed right now you demon get out in the name of jesus get out get out in the name of jesus body be healed be healed be healed be healed thank you father thank you father i speak victory for the church victory for your people through the course of this week victory things are shifting your business is shifting your marriage is shifting victory is manifesting 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 in the name of jesus be blessed be blessed in jesus precious name welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back i believe you've been affected by the word of god please don't go away let me quickly mention that I am touring the United Kingdom this October. The entire UK, I'll be touring different cities and different areas of the UK with the message of Jesus Christ. Until Christ is revealed, the believer cannot be unveiled. And as long as the believer don't know who he is, he becomes a victim of identity crisis. He becomes a victim of religion. He becomes a victim of, of struggles or trying to look for God. But listen to me carefully. God has been revealed in a man called Christ. God has been revealed in a man called Christ Jesus. And I want to all of you in the UK to plan to be part of this event. Well, I'm talking about eight to nine locations. The details are coming on the screen. The date, the time, the venue, and that area of the UK, and a phone number for details. Look for the one nearest to you and plan to be a part of the event. And mobilize people. And if you know people who live in those areas, reach out to them. The greatest kindness you can do to a man is to bring him and God into a vibrant relationship via Jesus Christ. That's the greatest service you can do to anybody. I really, I really believe God that the UK tour will bring a total shift to that, to that nation. It will change people's lives in such a sporadic dimension. If you know anybody, reach out to them. I'm looking forward to having all of you as a part of the event in the UK. Finally, make sure that you invite more people to this platform. Let's flood the earth with the fragrance of God's grace. I'm really excited, friends. Looking forward to meeting all of you as I come into the United Kingdom this October. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Amen. Amen to your victory station.